Okay, so effect number three. Um, in this one, we'll be basically um, using this note here to trigger it. So the third note, effect number three. So note number three, and we want to make a diagonal thing going up and down um, diagonally like this. So what I'll do is um, I'll just create a new uh, chain, hold down number three, button number three. So we select the right button, and now only button number three activates this one. And we can rename it Control R to three, and just rename it also right clicking like this. So now we've got this, and same problem as before, um, as the second effect, we want it to start from over here. So we use a shift, a pitch to shift, um, which note is turning on. So here we want to do minus one and minus two. So I set minus two to the pitch. And then we'll, when you want to make an animating effect um, or something that's moving, first you want to draw it. So just have everything light up and then you want to animate it. Um, unless it's like a really advanced effect, but that's basically how it works. First you uh, draw it and then you make it move. So in this case, we want to light it up like this. So we can already see if we know that um, to go to the left, it's one, and then it, the launch pad is divided in half. Um, so to go up, it's four. So one, two, three, and four. We can already see that diagonally it's gonna be five, 10, and 15. But just in case you want to see it visually. Um, so you've got the, so we're starting from here. Now the pitch shifts it down there. And now with the chord, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. And then this one, we're gonna go up again to five and then all the way up to 10, oops. And then with this one, we're gonna go all the way up to 15. And you can see the note just changing there. Now, the problem is we've only got three left and we need another four, but that's fine because we can just take those four and then uh, make another chord and just duplicate that. So what we want to do is we can calculate this mathematically also. Um, this is gonna be 13. Um, basically, we want this um, button to go all the way here. And if you remember, the launch pad's divided in half. So we want um, half of 64, 32. So if I do 32, it will basically take all of this and put it here, right? So let's just do that, 32. And just in case you don't want to follow on mathematically, all you have to do is just move it about uh, keep on increasing it until you see it's got the right value. So we'll, we just crossed it. So there. And now we just need to add it, um, add another um, uh, few to it. So plus one, plus two, plus three. And oops, we've hit uh, a snag here. So um, so this actually gives me a good uh, good. Um, good opportunity sh to show you guys um, what to do in this situation because the code is pretty limited per, um, per se. So what you can do here is um, you can say, for example, um, we're gonna start from here, you can say. So this will allow us to do it easily. So if we start from this button here instead, um, here, so th this is basically um, you would start off like this and then run into this problem. So it's perfect for me to show you guys. So uh, instead of starting from here, we want to start from here. So we can just do it from here also. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine. It's basically gonna be 15, I think. Uh, oh no, of course we're starting from here, so it's 13. Um, so then what we want to do is do minus five, minus 10 and minus 15 because we're going in the opposite direction. We're going down, not up. So if here it's plus five to go from here to here, it's gonna be minus five. So here we just have to invert everything. And then for this one, we basically have to do 36 and ooh, I calculate it um, badly again. So, um, okay, this is absolutely perfect to show you guys what to do in this situation. So you see the code just cannot handle it. It's too far for the code to go. So what you do is, You've got this and you've created your first effect. Um, we can just do, um, just set it back to um, what it was before. So I've got it like this and we've seen it. There's no way that the code can reach this note up here. So what we have to do is you drag a MIDI effect rack into this and then we basically make two effects um, from the same uh, note. So one note is going in and then we're gonna have this which is basically bottom left, okay? 
this is the bottom left side here okay and then we're going to make another chain here and it's also going to trigger and you see it's triggering here right now we want this one to be top right and it's basically going to be the same exact effect so we're going to take the pitch and do plus uh, 32 uh, let's see here and then we're going to go up till we see it's on the right number there okay and then we're going to just drag in a chord and do the exact same thing five to make it go up there and then 10 and then 15 because we know from before that that's the values and then we've got this okay and then what we want to do we want to arpeggiate it to note this we can't put an arpeggiator here and then an arpeggiator here to make the two go um, so what do we do now basically if we minimize this we can just double click on it and we just know this just draws it this creates the diagonal thingy magic uh, this we can put an arpeggiator after it like this and then it will animate so that's basically as simple as it goes um, and we can just make it go up infinitely or something like that um, let's do the same thing so the arpeggiator it's kind of like it, it, it's not so visual I, I usually put a note length after them just so that the notes last longer and the effect seems a bit more consistent so we can do this can make this 50 and we can make this 175 again so that's kind of cool uh, let's do 250 because now nah, that's too much 175 is fine so this is um uh, kind of showing you guys the process um, of the limits. So that's that was actually kind of lucky that that happened. So I can actually explain what to do in these cases when um, when a component or an effect kind of limits you. There's always a way around it. So this, for example, is um, the way around uh, the chord, not not going more than thirty six uh, semitones. Semitones would be values, um, the notes, basically. Um, so it only allows you to go up 36. So this is a way around it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If something wasn't clear, uh, just to remind you again, because this is probably the trickiest thing. Um, if you put the arpeggiator here, inside it, you've only put it inside the top right and not in top left. So that will only animate this side. Okay. But if you put the arpeggiator after it, um, so far it's just drawing everything right. So far it What's coming out of this is just the um, diagonal part. The arpeggiator will then arpeggiate that because um, it's receiving both of the chains inside here because we've closed this off and this is outside. And then the note length will just make it chubby. <laughs> so um, that's effect number three. And um, I'm not sure what I'll do for effect number four, um, but I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you have any requests, um, just leave a comment below or any questions. Cheers.